what is time is time real is the nature of time linear or is it cyclical as per the general theory of relativity time is relative it can expand and it can contract like a fabric but to the ancients time was just a measure for the day and night and the higher measures like seasons and years they created calendars based on astronomical observations the ancients believed that time is cyclical in nature the mayans had developed their time cycle which is popularly known as the mayan calendar but even the ancient indian texts mention a grand cycle of time that repeats after eons surya siddhanta one of the oldest texts on astronomy in india talks about two kinds of time the murta means the measurable and amurta means immeasurable corresponding to its smallness the murta time cycle starts with a prana a period of 4 seconds and continues up to yugas with millions of years and finally ends with 311 trillion years so in the next few minutes we are going to learn about the hindu kala chakra and the concept of yugas as per the surya siddhanta there are four types of yugas the satyug the treta yug the dwapar yug and the kali yug the number of years in each of these yugas is in the ratio of 4 as to 3 as to 2 as to 1 with the smallest yuga being kali yuga in hindu kala chakra a kali yuga is a period of 4 lakh 32000 years the duration of a dwapar yuga is 8 lakh 64000 years twice that of kali yuga the duration of a treta yuga is 12 lakh 96000 years thrice that of kali yuga and finally the satyuga being the longest of the four years has a duration for 17 lakh 28000 years it is four times that of kali yuga a cycle of these four yugas is called a mahayuga or a chaturyuga and at the end of this cycle by adding the period of the four yugas 4 million 300 and 32000 years are elapsed at the end of this period a cataclysmic event occurs called a pralaya which can wipe out more than half of life forms on planet earth somewhat like the great dark the cycle doesn't stop here as per the surya siddhanta and the other vedic texts when 71 such chatur yugas are completed it is called a manvantar a manvantar is a period that lasts for roughly 307 million years so what is a manvantara a manvantara is a time from the first human to be created till the end of 71 chaturyugas it is a period for the birth of mankind the evolution of the human race and finally the death of mankind at the end of the manvantara that is 307 million years later a manvantara pralaya occurs this can wipe out almost all of the human race with only a handful of survivors to become the progenitors of the next manvantara and the cycle continues with 14 such manvantaras are said to have elapsed it gives a period of roughly 4.32 billion years this is called a kalpa a kalpa is just one day in the life of the creator god brahma one day of brahma is equal to 4.32 billion human years in a kalpa there are 14 manvantaras this means that humanity is created 14 times and destroyed 14 times every manvantar has a progenitor having the title of manu and every manvantar has a supreme deity called indra but hang on isn't indra a proper noun it's the name of hindu thunder god who rules the heavens as a king isn't it the fact is as per hindu scriptures the word indra is a title and not a name and so is the word manu a title and not a name at the end of each kalpa there is 14 manvantars naimittik pralakas where in whole life on earth is destroyed with no survivors of any kind it is the judgment day for all of life on planet earth. hold on take some time to absorb this completely because the cycle is still not over brahma's day is called akalpa it spans 4.32 billion years 
but this is analogous to the 12 hours of the day. The same is the night of Brahma. So the total period of Brahma's day and his night is 8.64 billion human years. Brahma rests for the night, he composes himself and with the start of the next Kalpa, begins the cycle of creation of life on another planet. As per the Vedic texts, Brahma lives for 100 such God years. So by calculation, the total lifespan of Brahma is 311 trillion human years. At the end of Brahma's lifespan, a Naimittik Mahapralai occurs where the universe itself dissolves and Brahma returns to his origin. Wait a minute, Brahma's origin? What could be the origin of the creator God? As per Hindu mythology, Brahma was created from the navel of Mahavishnu. At the end of Brahma's lifespan of 311 trillion human years, it is said that only a single breath of Mahavishnu has elapsed. Mahavishnu is known to be the primordial creator, the omnipotent, the omniscient and the omnipresent, the anadi and the anadi, the one which has no beginning and no end, the one whose origin cannot be known. But then you must have heard that we are already living in the Kali Yuga. But now the real question is, which Kali Yuga? So put on your seat belts because now we are going to calculate the number of years that have elapsed since the start of Brahma's lifespan. As per Siddhanta texts, we are in the Kali Yuga of the 28th Chaturyuga of the 7th Manvanta in the first Kalpa of 51st year of Brahma. So let's try to decipher this in incremental steps. We are in the Kali Yuga which began in 3102 before Christ era. So the time elapsed from the start of this Kali Yuga is 3102 plus 2020 minus 1 which equals 5121 years. But in the Chaturyuga cycle, we are in the Kali Yuga and not the Satyuga. So the time elapsed since the start of the current Chaturyuga is equal to the span of Satyuga plus Treta Yuga plus Dwapar Yuga plus 5121 years of current Kali Yuga. On adding these, we realize that exactly 3 million 893,121 years have elapsed since the start of current Chaturyuga. But we are not in the first Chaturyuga, but in the 28th Chaturyuga of this Manvantar, as stated earlier. This means that 27 such Chaturyugas have already elapsed since the start of this Manvantar. So by adding the time span of preceding 27 Chaturyugas to the number of years elapsed, in the current Chaturyuga, we get a period of 120,533,121 years which is the number of years that have elapsed since the start of this Manvan. It implies that the Manu, or the progenitor of today's human race, existed about 120 million years ago. But we are not in the first Manvantar of this Kalpa, but in the seventh Manvantar. So six such Manvantars have already occurred where humanity was created six times and destroyed six times. So by adding the time span of the six preceding Manvantars to the number of years elapsed since the start of seventh Manvantar, we get a period of 1,960,853,121 years. So the current Kalpa or the day of Brahma started about 1.96 billion years ago. Feeling small already? That's expected. But hold on, we are not in the first Kalpa of Brahma's first year. We are in the first Kalpa of his 51st year. Which means Brahma's 50 years have already elapsed. So by adding the time span of preceding 50 years, to the number of years elapsed since the start of the current Kalpa, we get 155,521,972,949,121 years. So the current age of Brahma is almost 155 trillion years, which is equivalent to his 50 years. This indirectly gives the age of our universe, as per Hindu Kalchakra, to be about 155 trillion years approximately. 
So do these values hold any scientific credence in today's time? As per modern physics, the age of our universe starting from Big Bang is estimated to be about 13.8 billion years. The Big Bang theory proposed by Edwin Hubble has been widely accepted today because it has three major observational evidences. The first one being the presence of cosmic microwave background radiation, which is the afterglow of the Big Bang. The second evidence for the Big Bang is the Big Bang nucleosynthesis, which shows the comparative scales of the percentages of hydrogen, helium and lithium present in the early universe and today. And the last observational evidence for the Big Bang theory is the cosmic expansion that was proposed by Alan Guth and detected by Edwin Hubble. So this shows us that the age of the universe as per Hindu scriptures does not agree with the age of the universe as per modern physics. So what is the point of knowing all of this exhausting information about the Kal Chakra if in the end we are going to conclude that those values are nothing more than just a myth? But we need to understand that these values, although mythical, portray the illimitable imagination of our Indian ancestors who thought about time scales not just in eons but spanning trillions of years. None of the contemporary civilizations in the world has cosmic time cycles spanning billions and trillions of years explained via structured mathematics. This shows that our ancestors had started wondering about the age of our universe spanning billions of years when the rest of the world was busy building huts and stone tools. Our ancestors were cogitating on questions like where did all of this come from and how did it come from nothing? And if it was made from nothing, who made it and who made the maker? Carl Sagan was an American astrophysicist, cosmologist, astrobiologist, astronomer and a science communicator. He had created a documentary named Cosmos. And here is what he said about the Hindu Kal Chakra in that documentary. The Hindu religion is the only one of the world's great faiths dedicated to the idea that the cosmos itself undergoes an immense, indeed an infinite, number of deaths and rebirths. It is the only religion in which the time scales correspond, no doubt by accident, to those of modern scientific cosmology. Its cycles run from our ordinary day and night to a day and night of Brahma. 8.64 billion years long, longer than the age of the Earth or the Sun and about half the time since the Big Bang. And there are much longer time scales still. Da 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 da